He lifted her high in the air, he sniffed and roared and smelled her there. Bran is found working the bellows for Mickham by Alebelly to tell him that there has been a bird from Rob Stark. Bran lets Alebelly carry him to Maester Lewin's turret where Rickon already waits. The Maester informs him that Rob has shattered a Lannister army at the Battle of Oxcross, killing its commander, Sir Stafford Lannister. He has also captured several castles and is currently at Ashmark, the stronghold of House Marbrand. Rickon asks if Rob is coming home, but Bran knows that only Lord Tywin Lannister matters, as Big Walder states, which disquiets him. Neither Big Walder nor Little Walder seem upset about their uncle, Sir Stevron Frey's death, who, they note, was very old, 50 or 60, and always tired. Little Walder asks if Sir Emmon Frey is now heir, and his cousin tells him the line of ascension. Sir Ryman, Edwin, Black Walder, Peter, and then Egon Frey and his sons. Little Walder states that Ryman is too old, and asks if they think he will be Lord, and Big Walder responds he will be Lord and does not care. The Maester tells them that they should be ashamed. Osher arrives to carry Bran, as she is stronger than Alebelly. Bran asks if she knows the way north, and she tells him it is easy. He then asks if the children of the forest, the others and giants are still there, and she tells him that she has seen giants and heard of the others. He then asks about the three-eyed crow, which she has never heard of. She seats him on the window seat of his bedchamber. Shortly thereafter, Jojen enters the room, unbidden with Mira behind him. Bran asks Jojen if he has heard about the bird, and he states it was not supper, it was a letter from Rob. Jojen explains that the green dreams are not easy to understand, and when Bran asks Jojen to tell him his dream, Jojen reveals that he dreamed the sea was lapping all the way around Winterfell. Waves crashed against the gates and towers, and the water came flowing over the walls and filled the castle. Drowned men were floating in the yard. He now recognises these men and declares that they are Alebelly, Septon Shale and Mickham. Bran, confused and dismayed, replies that the sea is hundreds of leagues away, and Winterfell's walls are so high water could not get in even if it did come. Jojen only repeats his claim, adding that he saw the dead, bloated and drowned. Bran wants to warn the men, but Jojen tells him it will not save them, as they will not believe him. He then asks Bran to tell of his wolf dream, and Bran replies that there are different kinds. There are the wolf dreams, which are not as bad as the others, in which he runs, hunts, and kills squirrels. He has other dreams where the crow comes in and tells him to fly. Sometimes the tree is also calling his name in those dreams, which frightens him, but not as much as when he falls. He explains that he never used to fall while climbing, and that he used to feed the crows in the burned tower, yet he did fall eventually, and now, when he sleeps, he falls all the time. Jojen tells Bran that he will be called a warg if others hear of his wolf dreams, and some will hate him in fear, as the power is strong in him. Bran is concerned, since in Old Nan's stories wargs were always evil, and tells Jojen that he wants to be a knight. Jojen replies that he is a winged wolf, but will never fly unless he opens the eye in his forehead, and he must search for it with his heart. When Bran states that Maester Lewin claims dreams are just that, Jojen responds that they are the past, and the future, and truth. With that, they leave him, and Bran tries unsuccessfully to open his third eye. On the following days, Bran tries to warn his household, but no one seems to believe him. Mickon thinks it's funny, and states that he always wanted to see the sea. Septon Chael states the gods will take him when they do, and he does not think he will drown, since he grew up on the banks of the White Knife. Alebelly takes heed and refuses to go bathe or go near a well, until, finally, other guardsmen give him a bath because he stinks so badly. Sir Roderick Cassell returns with a man that Hayhead tells Bran is named Reek. He served the now-dead Ramsay Snow, the Bastard of Bolton. The Bastard and Reek murdered Lady Hornwood. Roderick's men shot Snow as he attempted to ride away. He had forced Lady Hornwood to marry him and then to sign a will naming him heir. Sir Roderick is concerned that Roose Bolton may not agree that doing this under duress would make the marriage and the will invalid. Roderick wants to keep Reek alive for judgement when Rob returns. Meanwhile, House Manderley and House Bolton are fighting in the Hornwood Forest, and Roderick does not have the strength to stop them. Sir Roderick then brings up Bran commanding Alebelly not to bathe. 
Bran tells him about the Green Dream, and Maester Lewin tells Roderick that he has explained to Bran the uncertainty of prophecies, but then notes that raiders in longships have been plundering and raping along the stony shore, and Leobald Tolhart sent his nephew Benfred Tolhart to deal with it. After he gets more information about the Green Dream, Roderick promises not to take Alebelly with him if he rides against the raiders. Bran takes some hope in this. When Bran meets with the Reeds later that night, Mira agrees that it should be possible to change prophecies. Mira gets angry with her brother when he disagrees, claiming that what he sees always comes true. Then Mira states that Alebelly and Bran should both fight to avoid their fates. Bran asks if he drowns also, and Jodren reveals another dream of his, in which Bran and Rickon lay dead at Reek's feet, and he was skinning off their faces with a long red blade. Mira states that she could go down to the dungeons and kill Reek now, but Jojen tells her she will not succeed. First, the jailers would stop her, and they will never believe. Even if Bran went to Greywater Watch, he could not avoid his fate. The green dreams do not lie. I demand a trial by combat.